passion, our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. Come and consume God, all we are. We give you permission, our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. Spirit, I will rise from the ashes. 
soldiers watched in vain was borrowed for three days his body there would not remain our God has robbed the grave our God has robbed the We're going to pause in our singing of worship to worship the Lord in uh, taking communion. So you can just have a seat for one moment. And if you didn't receive a, a cup and a wafer, uh, there are some available. If you just want to slip up your hand and an usher can bring one to you or if you'd like to go. But I want us this morning to... We, we do communion in remembrance of uh, what Jesus did for us and what God sacrificed for us. It's not a traditional thing, although we do it often. It's meant for us to reflect, reflect on what God has done uh, for mankind, reflect on what God has done uh, for us personally, right? And the saving uh, power that he's done and work that he's done in our life. We read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul uh, helps us to uh, think about this and how to kind of partake of communion. It says in verse 23, I receive from the Lord what also I pass on to you, the Lord Jesus. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you do this in remembrance of me. If you could just peel back the top, you'll have your uh, bread there. And let's pray over it. And as I pray, think about the broken body of Jesus dying for our sins, right? The sins of mankind. He, he took that on the cross and that's what our the bread represents this morning. God, we just praise you, God. We thank you. Thank you, God. We just pause this morning to reflect on all that was accomplished at the cross. 
God, your, your body sacrifice. There had to be a, a payment for sin, God. And you took that on yourself. You took my sin, Lord. That, that should have been me, God. But you paid that for us, Lord. And we recognize that. We remember that today, God. We honor you. We honor you, God. We worship you this morning. We love you, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. We can take the bread together. And he says, he continues in the same manner. Also, after supper, Jesus took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The blood of Jesus was a new covenant. And it's a great uh, message to think about uh, what the covenant was before this event, before this moment. Right? But the, the blood represents a new covenant with God and his people. And the blood washed away the sins of, of mankind, of all mankind, past, present, and future, right? There's power. We sing a song about the power in the blood, and it's, it's, it's uh, purposeful. It's not just a song. There's cleansing power in the blood. There's uh, the blood of Jesus it didn't just wipe away uh, sin, but it wiped away the addiction to sin, right? And it wiped away uh, the slavery to sin, right? Jesus set us free. And so we remember that uh, as we drink this juice that represents the blood of Jesus. Would you pray with me as, as we remember this, God? And Heavenly Father, God, we hold this cup that just represents a new way, a new covenant that you have with your people. Man, this new thing, this thing that you did, that your shedding of your blood that wiped away. There is so much power that took place uh, at the cross, God, and your blood being shed. It, it didn't just wipe away our problems. It didn't just wipe away our issues, God, but it, it bridged the gap between us and you, God, and, and it provided a way, a relationship with our Heavenly Father, our Creator, God. Jesus, we remember this morning uh, the power that your blood had over our lives that broke addiction and it broke the slavery to sin, God. It brought forgiveness, it brought redemption, it brought cleansing. We honor you, God. We love you, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We can drink the cup together. Amen. Would you stand with us? We're going to continue in a moment of worship.
trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. that you are the resurrection and the life, that if we believe in you, we will live even though we die. God, we are so looking forward to the day that we will get to join together in your heavenly kingdom, that we will get to stand around your throne and worship you forever and ever as one body established upon you. Lord, I pray that in this life, you would help us to run the race well, that we would be built as a church upon you, the chief cornerstone. Without you, the whole building falls apart. So Jesus, we exalt you this morning. We place you on the throne that you are on in our hearts. We exalt you. In, in every word that we sing, in every thought that is on our mind, may you truly be lifted high in this place today. May our church truly be established upon you. We are your body. We belong to you, Jesus. Help us always remember that. In your wonderful, powerful name we pray, amen. Yeah, as you find your seats today, uh, be sure that you would say hi to those who are around you. Well, good morning, Life Church. And so good to see you all after another week uh, to be together in the Lord's house. Welcome to Life Church. I'm Pastor Sam. I'm the discipleship pastor here. And uh, we are so excited that you're here this morning, especially if you're new. As always, um, you can text the word connect to the number that's on your screen. If you're if a you're first time guest, a second time guest, whatever the case may be, we would love to get to know you a bit more. And uh, we have a small gift for you at the welcome desk. If you want to head on out there in the lobby, take your Connect card after service. We'd love to, to meet you a little bit. Um, also, if you have prayer requests, we would love to partner with you in prayer. Just as, as a church staff, we pray for requests each week, and uh, we would love to, to kind of know what's going on in your life, what's, what's God doing in your life, uh, whether it's a praise report or uh, a need in your life, or for someone you know, we would love to partner with you in that way. So jot that down on the Connect card, drop it in the offering bucket as it goes by. Ushers, you can prepare to uh, distribute the offering buckets and come forward at this time. Or if you don't have enough time to drop it in the offering bucket, you can always hand your Connect card to the welcome desk uh, in the lobby after the service as well. So at this time, we're going to receive tithes and offerings and uh, give a percentage of uh, what God has blessed us with back to God and, and invest in his kingdom so that more around the world can know him and his love and his goodness. Amen. Ushers, you can begin distributing. Also, the, there are clipboards that will be passed at this time for the Feed My Starving Children packing event that's coming up later this week. And so we have a slot as a church reserved uh, for, for that time. And last year, for those of you who are here, you might remember we had an awesome turnout, a 
awesome number of volunteers who participated in this. And so as the clipboards are passed, just go ahead and pass them on back behind you. Take a look at that. If you're available that day, we would love to have you there and serve together and uh, minister to the needs of, of children around the world in that way. So God bless as you give. Turn your eyes to the screen for a few announcements this week. Good morning, Live Church. Thanks for tuning in to this week's announcements. Hey, middle school and high school students, Youth Convention is happening October 21st to 23rd. It's an amazing weekend, probably the best one you'll have all year. It's in Bismarck uh, Evangel Church there. So the cost is $100 plus your meals. Uh, it's going to be an awesome time. You don't want to miss it, except the registration is due today. So please bring your forms and your money to the welcome desk, or you can find me. And if you don't have a form, you need one, uh, there should be spares at the welcome desk. And again, you can come and talk to me about it. Uh, it's going to be an amazing weekend. You won't want to miss it. Yes, you do not want to miss this event. And talking about events, Life Church Kids is hosting an international food fest, which is happening October 24th at 530. Life Church Kids is uh, trying to raise $5,000 by October 24th, and we want to reach this goal, and we need your help. And if we do reach this goal, the kids and you get to shave my beard and dye my hair any color that you want, rainbow, pink, any color, I, it doesn't matter, and I will wear that hairdo for a long time. So it's gonna be <laughs> awesome. This event is going to be a blast. Uh, tickets are available at the kids' check-in desk. If you are 12 and under, the prices for your ticket are $10. And if you are 13 and above, uh, tickets are $15. You are not going to want to miss this event. Make sure to invite your friends and family and make sure to get them those tickets. All right, our last announcement is for you ladies. Mary's Song is happening Saturday, October 16th. It starts at 9 a.m. Uh, they ask you to bring a dish to share with the other ladies for breakfast. Uh, there's going to be a speaker, Jesse McFerrin. It's going to be awesome. And now they provide childcare. So ladies, you don't want to miss uh, Mary's Song happening October 16th. Yes, thanks for tuning in to this week's announcements. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Sean. I'm one of the board members here. Um, I'm joined by Tim. Um, all of our board members are either back in the children's room or children's service or vacation. So Tim and I are representing the church today. Um, October is uh, Pastor Appreciation Month. Um, we have a very, very fine staff here. Um, if they would join me on stage here, please, with their spouses. Um, yes. Oh, Trenton did make it here. He is usually back. Uh, Pastor Trenton is usually in the back with our kids, so we don't get to see him very often. But this, everyone, if you haven't met Pastor Trenton. <laughs> All right. Um, we are so blessed by these people. They, they do a lot of things for us, and we really appreciate them. Um, October is just one month, but we appreciate all, them all year long. They, they do a wonderful job for us, and we really appreciate that. So give them a round of applause. Um, in, the, in the foyer, you'll find, find baskets. Um, if you want to drop a card off for them for this month, or any time, just hand them something. Um, but anyways, uh, Pastor Kevin and uh, his wife, um, Becky, we appreciate you. He's our um, our youth uh, pastor, Pastor Sam, and he's our discipleship pastor, and Pastor Chloe, she's a worship pastor. We thank them very much. Um, and then uh, Pastor Cretton on the end there. We thank you all very much. Well, we are, it's an honor to serve you. It's an honor to serve the church, and we're just grateful for the team that has been assembled here and 
uh, as we found out this past week, the uh, next pastor, our lead pastor that'll be joining us. So we're just in a, in a mode for the next few weeks of uh, excitement for what's to come, uh, kind of a fulfillment of a long process of finding a lead pastor and all that kind of stuff. And so we're just excited to have the church moving forward. You, uh, I get the privilege to speak to you today, and then we have uh, guest speakers throughout the next few weeks and stuff like that. So be praying for uh, Pastor Von Dell as he uh, kind of transitions here, as the family moves here and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're excited for that. All right. Today, I want to talk to you about God. Yes, I know. Uh, more specifically, I guess, would be who is God, All right? And I know that can be kind of a broad uh, topic as well. But there's a story in the Bible of Moses and the burning bush and uh, a key phrase there that we're going to kind of focus on of who God is, who God says he is, right? But first I want to tell you, when I was growing up, my family enjoyed going for rides. Uh, we would drive to old farmsteads, uh, maybe where my grandpa used to live, uh, or we would drive by old houses that were dream homes. I don't know if you guys do that, but uh, so I grew up in Spokane. I was actually born in San Diego, but grew up in Spokane, and there's some houses that every time we go back, man, one day, that would be amazing to uh, see that. So we would drive there, or we would uh, drive around. Uh, there's a big lake, Lake Coeur d'Alene in northern Idaho. If you ever go to northern Idaho, you need to check out uh, Lake Coeur d'Alene, and we would drive around it. Uh, we would just drive sometimes for leisure with no point to it, just to get out of the house, get out and around. Um, but sometimes we would uh, drive around and we would have a specific, you know, goal in mind, something to see, uh, something to look at, check out, investigate, right? A Christmas Eve tradition of ours was to go to grandma's, grandma and grandpa's house to open presents. Um, but then we would drive around and look at Christmas lights and just the fun of of seeing just neighborhoods lit up and all that kind of stuff. Inevitably, though, each year, my grandpa would say to us, uh, whose house, his house, had one strand of light just around the, just the front porch. And so every time we would say, man, we're going to get in the car, we're going to drive around Spokane and look at lights, he would ask us, why would I want to drive all over town? I can put my lawn chair in my front yard and look at my lights. That I spent hours putting it right, <laughs> okay? But sometimes when we would go on these drives, like I said, sometimes they were just for fun, just for leisure. But sometimes, uh, most of the time, they had a purpose of seeing something specific. Today, we're going to look at Moses and the burning bush, okay? He was looking, something caught his eye, and he was looking at something specific. We're going to study that this morning. Would you pray with me? Heavenly good God, we just love you, Lord. And Father God, today I just pray that this word that you placed on my heart today would just reach your people, God, that they would just understand who you are, the love you have for them. God, the things that uh, you are to us, your strength, God, you provide, God, you help, uh, you deliver, you restore, you redeem. God, you're, you're everything uh, to us, and I just pray that uh, we would understand that today. In Jesus' name, amen. So this story is a story of God calling Moses into leadership over the Israelites. Before we dive into it, it's in Exodus chapter 3, if you want to kind of get ready to read through it. But here's a few facts about Moses that will help us to identify with him and kind of put ourselves into this story. Remember, he, Moses was uh, born an Israelite, and the Israelites were in slavery to Egypt. Okay, very important. Uh, Pharaoh, the, the king of Egypt, his plan was to kill all of the boys. Uh, Israelites had been uh, in captivity with, in Egypt for a while, 
and their numbers were growing, and the Pharaoh is getting kind of intimidated by the amount of uh, people and how big their the amount of people, the amount of Israelites, excuse me, are, are getting. And so he wants to kind of put a, a hedge to that, and let's try to help this situation. So his decision is to kill all the boys. But Moses' mom places him in a basket and sets him in the Nile River, right? And along comes, this is all happening really fast, but you can read it in Exodus chapter 1 and 2. Uh, Pharaoh, of all people, Pharaoh's daughter finds Moses, and so she rescues him. And so Moses grows up with all the perks of the Egyptians, but he's an Israelite, okay? And so if you could put yourself in his shoes, he's on the, the comfortable side, all right? He's on the, the side that's winning, the side that's prospering, um, but he's born of the people that are being oppressed and the, those that are doing all the work and those that are uh, in the slavery uh, in Egypt. So after he grows up, he observes one day an Egyptian beating a Hebrew slave. And Moses takes exception, and he kills the Egyptian and tries to hide him, but people figure it out. And the next time, Moses, the next day, he intervenes in another argument, right? And the two that are arguing look at him like, what are you going to do, kill us too? And so Moses realizes, oh man, I've I've been caught. People know what I've done. And so he flees to, uh, he, he runs away. And Pharaoh hears what's going on in all of this. Uh, and he's trying to chase Moses and uh, kill him. Moses goes to Midian where he ends up meeting and marrying uh, his wife Zipporah. Amazing name, probably the nickname that Moses called her was Zippy, but I'm not 100% sure. It's not biblical, uh, just something I would, uh, you know, call her, but an awesome name. So we're going to read in Exodus 2, verses 23 and 24, what it was like for the Israelites in this moment, in this time. It says, during that long period, and we learn uh, later on in the book of Acts and other verses in the Bible, this is about a 40-ish year period of where Moses has grown up and, and done all the stuff that we just talked about. All right, Exodus 2, 23. During that long period, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out. And their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. God heard their groaning, and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. God hears you, and God sees you. You may be in a spot kind of like the Israelites where you have maybe turned from the Lord uh, maybe you're in a desert, maybe you're in a wilderness, maybe uh, life has happened to you, and slowly you feel like, man, we've drifted away. I don't know where God is. I feel abandoned by God. I don't know what's happening in my life, and you're crying out in your desperation in the situation that you're in, whatever it is, wondering, does God even know that I exist? Does God even hear my prayers we could call my I'm crying out to him it doesn't seem like he even uh, understands or hears or sees me does he even know who I am the Israelites probably had a very bleak outlook on their life on their future Moses was most likely scared angry confused uh, people want him dead <laughs> Uh, his people, that he, his family, right, are, are being oppressed by the people that raised him. So the people that took him in are, are against his family and who he 
uh, who uh, his people are. But God heard them and he saw them. God knows where you're at, whatever life has brought you to, whatever consequences you're facing uh, because of your own bad choices or the choices of others, whatever those consequences would be. Maybe it's a series of bad things uh, that's happened to you. It's, we would say, oh, life, life happens, right? And maybe it's a series of of bad choices, again, on our own or from someone else. Or maybe it's a, a generational problem in your family. Maybe it's an outrageous uh, series of events. Or maybe it's a slow, kind of a slow fade uh, away from the Lord and kind of a slow fade away from what, we, what relationship we used to have with God. But if you're here today, And you're thinking, does God even listen to me? I promise you that God hears you. He sees you. Let's read from Exodus chapter 3. And we're going to start at verse 1. Now, Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. This mountain uh, is actually later on, would be called Mount Sinai, and it's where Moses would receive the Ten Commandments. And so it's kind of a, this is kind of the first moment in his life at that mountain where there is an amazing experience. But it's kind of in the middle of nowhere, kind of you know, kind of a desert, kind of a wilderness. We don't know how many sheep he has. Uh, we don't know what all is happening in his life, if he's in a good mood or, or a tough mood in that moment. But he leads them around to the side of the wilderness, and he comes to, to Mount Horeb. And there the angel, verse 2, there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, hmm, I'm going to go over there and let's, let's see this strange sight. Why, why is this bush burning, but it's not being consumed? We don't know how far away Moses has to walk, but He heads over there, and when he gets closer, right, God calls to him from within a bush. (laughs) Whoa, Moses, Moses, what what in the world? Uh, If you're a shepherd, you're probably by yourself. Uh, He's probably never heard a talking sheep, probably never heard a talking bush, hey? Uh, He already understands that this bush is burning and not being consumed so he's already kind of like oh this is kind of weird and then it speaks to him like whoa what in the world looking at let's look a little bit deeper at this amazing event and we can understand better how god wants to connect with you from his book the bush always burns heath adamson wrote about Jesus in the unannounced moments in life. He talks about how Moses had to turn aside from what he was doing, from where he was going, where he was at. He has to turn aside and he has to go to the burning bush to have this moment with God. A lot of times we want God to come to us in our situation Right, and we're wondering, what? I can't hear you. Uh, do you even know I exist? Like, what in the world? Right? And sometimes in our heart, in our mind, in our soul, we have to make the decision we're going to go to God and we're going to connect with Him. When Moses says, this is continuing from the, the book that I referenced, when Moses says, I will go over and see this strange sight. The Hebrew word for see literally means to perceive. And the Greek version of this word means revelation. So Moses sees the burning bush. 
realizes that something was different, and he wanted to figure out what was causing this phenomenon. Okay? It's kind of like this story from my life. Uh, growing up in San Diego uh, for kind of the first nine years of my life, uh, searchlights were a thing. Are searchlights, uh, do you guys know what searchlights are? Maybe a raise of hands. Anyone follow searchlights? I haven't seen many in, since I've been in North Dakota, but uh, in bigger uh, cities. So if you're having an activity, an event, uh, anything, right? Uh, sometimes they would have these enormous spotlights and they'd shine them up in the sky and they'd be moving and you would literally, you could look up and you just see light, kind of like um, any Batman fans. It was probably where like Gotham got the bat symbol. So if you picture that, it looks like that, only just a spotlight, okay? And so um, when us kids would see these spotlights and in a city, uh, there's lights everywhere, even in Williston. If you're out you know, downtown, you can't see much out beyond it, right? There's lights everywhere. And in a big city, there's lights everywhere. There's all kinds of different lights. But the searchlights, the spotlights would stand out. And when us kids would see them, we would beg my dad, man, we got to go find out what's happening. It's, gotta be, it's probably something amazing. It's probably something awesome. Sometimes he would oblige. And so we would drive through the city, you, have, you literally have no idea where they're coming from, so you see a light, and you're going towards the light. Oh, we turn this. Oh, it's probably over here. Oh, we're and you're following the light until you see what massive, amazing, and awesome event it is. It's, most of the time, it was maybe a carnival or it was a concert, but a lot of the times, it was just a used car sale, and it was pretty like disappointing. Like, why would you spend that much money uh, to draw people to a car sale? But anyway, uh, the point of that is that we would decide, we would see something uh, peculiar, kind of cool to us little kids, and we wanted to see it. We wanted to investigate it. We wanted to check out what was going on, okay? Moses notices this bush burning, okay? And as you study, there are certain bushes in the... Uh, Middle East area over there um, that have, this is kind of debatable, I guess, depending on which scientist you uh, study, but there's bushes over there that uh, secrete a liquid or like a sap that is flammable, uh, kind of an oily substance that when the heat of that dry desert, uh, it would actually, that oil would combust and have like a flash flame. And so the, ironically, like the bush wouldn't burn itself. It would actually be unscathed, but there would be this a flame would go up, boom, of that oily substance lighting up. So it wasn't super out of the ordinary for Moses to be out and see a bush just burn up. But it was <laughs> extraordinary for it not to actually go out. So the flame is sitting there like a fire, like a bonfire, but this bush is like still alive. And so he, he makes the decision in his heart, I'm going to go over and try to understand what's happening here. Okay? Uh, back to Heath Adamson's book, many rabbis have commented on this passage of Scripture pointing out that the bush had probably been on fire before Moses recognized it. But Moses finally perceived it that day. It wasn't that he saw with his eyes something new God was doing. It was that he saw, he perceived, he had a revelation about something God had been doing all along. The bush always burns. The ground is always holy, is always sacred. God wants to have moments with us just like he had with Moses. And probably in your life there's 
there's a bush that's burning and it, God wants to meet with you and he wants to have an amazing relationship. He has a talk for you. He has encouragement for you. He has a gift for you. And all we have to do is stop being distracted by all these other little things that aren't really as cool as a bush that's not being consumed, right? And we just need to turn and go to that bush, have that moment, and God is there. He's going to speak to you out of that bush, and he's going to speak into you life. If you want to read this book I'm referring to, it's literally called The Bush Always Burns, The Ground is Always Sacred, because this isn't in my notes. I'm just going to go off for a little bit. Uh, God created everything, right? Genesis, the beginnings of the world, like this ground that this church is literally built on, if you can imagine, kind of kind of blows your mind, but this this land was here like back when Jesus, back when Moses, back when God like created and separated the lands and made the continents like this land was here. This land is holy. We may think Oh, I mean, oh, we're just going to put a parking lot out there and we're going to, you know, maybe put a Chick-fil-A at some point, maybe, probably not, but uh, out on this thing, right? We're going to do that. And we may think, oh, we're just trying to make a living. We're trying to make Williston uh, more awesome, okay? But this ground was literally created by the hands of God. Jesus was there uh, when this land was formed, right? This ground is holy. This ground is sacred. Not just the land, not just the spot where God tells Moses, take your sandals off. This ground is holy. Man, everywhere that God created is sacred, is holy. God had this ordained, anointed, powerful encounter with Moses planned, but what would have happened if Moses had never turned aside to investigate it. God wanted to speak to Moses, and for whatever reason, Moses wasn't ready to receive it until this burning bush moment where he turns aside from what he's doing, the everyday uh, kind of monotonous herding of sheep, Out of his brokenness, out of his anger, his confusion, he's wondering, man, at what day is Pharaoh going to show up and and off me? (laughs) Years and years and years kind of lead up to this moment. God heard the cries of his people, and he wanted to use Moses to respond. Let's go ahead to verse 4, Exodus chapter 3 again. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses says, here I am. Do not come any closer, God says. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. In the next several verses, God tells Moses the plan of how he wants Moses to go to Pharaoh and release the Israelites. And there's this exchange going on between Moses and God, and I'm going to jump to verse 13. It says, where Moses says, sorry, where Moses says, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? And God replies, I am who I am. When I read this, ever since I was a kid, right, I always think, that's, that's a funny name. How, how can your name be I am? Okay. Anyone here 
uh, seen the old Laurel and Hardy skit, Who's on First? Okay, this exchange here, I kind of picture the Laurel and Hardy. So they had this, one, this bit, they were comedians, and one of them was uh, in this little skit, oh, I have a baseball team, and the other one wants to know the names of the guys on his baseball team. Well, the guy's name on first was who? Like, who's on first? And the other, well, that's what I'm asking you. And I'm not asking you. I'm telling you that who's on first. What's on second? I don't know who's on. And so they go through this whole bit. And so I kind of picture uh, this exchange happening when Israel, when Moses goes to the Israelites and the Israelites say, so the God of our fathers sent you? Yeah. Are you going to tell us his name? I am. Okay, go ahead. I did. No, you didn't. If the God of our fathers sent you, tell me his name. I am. No, you're not. Okay, and they're just going back and forth. Okay, back to the story. God says, this is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. I am is the word aye, meaning the self-existent, the eternal, the one who always has been and always will be, the ever-present one, I am. We get the word Yahweh from this as well. It reflects the promise of God's constant presence with his people. It expresses his faithful love and care and his desire to bring people into a relationship with himself. God is telling them, I have always been here. I will always be. I am everything you need. Whatever's happening in your life, I am. Whatever's going on, whatever, uh, if you're starving, if you're thirsty, if you're broken, if you're imprisoned, if you're uh, angry, whatever it is, I am, I am, I am. I will provide for you. I will protect you. And as God is revealing his plan to Moses, Moses is a perfect, like, amazing leader that says, yes, sir, I'll do everything that you say without any objection. No, not, not quite. Actually, Moses has several objections. Each time God says, I'm going to do this, uh, Moses, <laughs> so here's some of them. In verse 11, Moses says, I'm, I'm not up to the job. God says, I will be with you. Verse 13, Moses says, how am I to explain to people who you are? God reveals himself as the God of their ancestors and God of the present I am. Chapter 4 begins and Moses says, the people won't believe me. God gives him three signs with which to convince them. Verse 10 I'm no speaker. God made him and promises to enable him uh, to speak. And Moses, verse 13, please send someone else. God won't do that. But he will allow Aaron, his brother, to go as a spokesperson. Moses, feeling insecure, he has his reasons and he has his excuses, but God equips him when he calls. He did it for Moses, and he does it for us. You may be looking at yourself today, and you're relating to Moses, maybe in his insecurities and his fear. You may feel empty. You may feel broken, confused, hurt. You may feel you're in your own little wilderness, your own desert, just like Moses. You can begin playing. Okay. Thank you. You may be saying, whatever it is that God uh, wants you to do, you may be saying how you can't do this. Right? It's true. 
Moses couldn't do it on his own. You can't do it on your own. And that's why God is saying to Moses and he's saying to you, I am. I am. We sung about God is the resurrection and the life. God is with you, and with God we can do all things. God's grace is sufficient for us that in our weakness, He is strong. He doesn't look at your weakness and just kind of cast you away. Like, oh, man, I need someone stronger than that. No, He takes your weakness, and with His strength, man, you can do whatever He has called you to do. God is saying to His people, and he's saying to Moses, and today he's saying to you, I am. I am. I am the God who saves. I am the God who restores. I am the God who redeems. I am the God who supplies. I am. I am. I am the God of your forefathers. I am the beginning. I am the end. I am eternal. I am self-existent. I am your deliverer. I am your provider. I am. I am, he's telling you today. When you wake up, I am. When you go down, I am. When you're in the highest heavens up in outer space, if we ever get there, uh, he's there. I am. When we go into the deepest oceans, he's there. I am. He is rock. He is shepherd. He is shield, he is light, he is strength, he is refuge, he's son, he's father, he's mother bird, he is help, he is shade, he is portion, he is song, he is redeemer, he is warrior, he is potter. Would you stand with me as we conclude this service? My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Whatever it is, if your needs are emotional, mental, physical, if you feel like I, we talked earlier, man, if you feel like you uh, relate to the Israelites in a wilderness, in a desert, you're crying out to God and you don't ever hear him, you don't know if he's even uh, with you, does he hear my prayer? He hasn't answered me in a long time. It's been years since I experienced the power of God and sometimes it's our heart and we have to turn and the bush has been burning all along and we're ignoring it we haven't seen it we're not even trying to recognize it man we're just trying to do our own thing that's probably if I have to be honest with you guys this morning that's probably my biggest weakness I just feel like I can do it I don't need God I don't want to bother God with this situation. I can, I can handle this, right? And it gets me in so much trouble, okay? There's times in my life that uh, there was deserts and there was, uh, there was hard times. And I felt like, man, I can do this. Like, I, don't, I didn't say this is in my notes, so that's why I'm crying. But anyway, uh, I didn't tell myself I don't need God, but it was the, the, that was what my heart was, that I don't need, I can do this part on my own. And I got finally to a part, a point that said, man, I, I've tried everything I can do and I'm going to turn to God. And guess what? God was there. God is I am. He wasn't ashamed of of me for running from him or he wasn't ashamed of me for trying to do it he's there he's there he's a burning bush and he's been burning for however long right and he's there i'm going to ask if our prayer teams would come forward please and we just want to provide opportunity this is kind of a general message to you that god is with you today so i want to encourage you in the next few minutes as we kind of wrap up this service before we do that man if you uh have something that uh you need to connect with god if you have a, a prayer request you would like someone to pray with you for uh these amazing people would love to join with you in prayer if you feel 
lost, if you feel uh, kind of in a desert situation, and this hopefully this message has motivated you to turn to God, right, and encounter Him, please come forward, pray with these individuals, spend some moments in prayer. So I'm going to pray, and I'm going to encourage you uh, to come forward, uh, spend a few moments with the Lord, and then we'll wrap up in prayer. So go ahead and and come forward if you would like to. Heavenly Father, God, I just love you, Lord. I thank you for all of your promises to us, God. I thank you for your love for us, man. When we feel like we're so far away from you, God, we realize you are here. You're with us, and you're waiting for us to come to you. You're waiting for us to turn away from all the things in life that distract us, all the things that take us away from you and you're waiting for us to turn away from those and turn to you God so we make that stand in our heart this morning God we come to you and just say help we just need you God we need you in every area of our life and so I pray for these people today God I ask you that if they need provisions God that you would meet those needs You rained food to the Israelites when they were in need, when they were starving, you provided. God, you promise everything that we need. God, you would bring it. Lord, I pray uh, whatever the circumstances that your people are going through today, God, that they would know that you're our redeemer. God, you're our rescuer. You're our help in times of trouble. God, you deliver us. You help us, Lord. You love us. You're our rock. God, you're our, you're our shield. When those around us, man, are, are uh, we're in a battle, we're in a war. God, daily we need you, God, and you're our shield, you protect us, God. We thank you for that, God. You're our portion. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Just in closing, some of you have been sitting in a lawn chair like my grandpa. You're looking at your own little strand of lights when God is shining a giant searchlight for you saying, come to me. I am what you need. I have so much for you. When you leave this place, man, just understand how much God loves you, how much he wants to speak to you. There's nothing that you have done that that hinders you from uh, hearing from the Lord, from perceiving what he wants to do in your life. God loves you. He sees you. He hears you. So God, as we leave this place this morning, I pray a blessing over your people. God, that this message, Moses' life, his calling would just ring in their hearts, God, that you're with us, the creator of the universe, the God of all, loves us. He hears us. He sees us. So as we go this week, God, would you go with us? Speak to us. God, be real in our life. I pray for those people who have Maybe they've had the same prayer request for many years, God, and they haven't seen the healing come. They haven't seen uh, salvation in their 
family. They haven't seen uh, addictions broken. God, I pray this week, man, your Holy Spirit would move in their life and they would see that answer this week, God. I pray for that. I pray that your power would be uh, in their life in an awesome way. We love you, Lord. We thank you, God, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for this morning. If you want to spend some more time in prayer, you're always welcome to. God bless you.